Welcome back to Tic-Tac-Toe from scratch on Unreal Engine 4. Today we're going to be looking at creating a main menu such as this where you can set your resolution, look at credits, and start the game whenever you want that we created in the previous tutorials. So let's get started. So the first thing you'd want to do is go ahead and create a brand new level. This is going to be our level just for the main menu. So let me go ahead and name this TTT underscore menu. And when to load it, you're going to need to save it. So whenever your game actually starts, this is the level is going to be loaded. And then we're going to get a widget blueprint. Call this main menu widget. Okay. So before we put anything on the widget, let's go ahead and open the level blueprint for the main menu. Go to the event begin play. Create widget. Main menu widget. And then we're gonna add it to viewport. So basically as soon as this level starts, it will open up our widget. So what are the things that we need? Let's get an image included as a background. So for that what you want to do is you want to import yourself an image. This image is my thumbnail from YouTube. So I am just going to go ahead and drag and drop this in here. It comes in as an image. We just want to get it there, stretch it all the way. I think that's fine. So this is going to be my main menu screen. Hopefully, this is working. So if I click play, uh, yeah, sure is working. So the first thing we would want is a vertical box. And we can lock that real quick. Yeah. This will allow us to put all our menu options right here. Okay, and I think we need a total of three, maybe four box. Buttons. Oh. So what having a vertical box does is it allows you to either flip them apart or switch them right inside the vertical box itself. And then while you're at the vertical box you can also increase the size for it. And you can do that by going to any of the buttons, or well, I guess all of them, and then clicking fill. So those will be our four buttons. Uh, this is the same kind of button that we created for our restart menu, which was uh, game UI. So just the same button as the restart button. So you can have it set to different colors when you press it, when you hover over it, all that good stuff. All right, so let, let me go ahead and add a text box inside each of them, and I will be right back. Okay, now that I've created every single text box just by dragging and dropping them under the button and then changing it, I'm also going to change the color and opacity uh, just so that it's consistent with the rest of the theme. So is this three, I think. There you go. Um, and if we go ahead and play this, I'm able to. Yeah, I can click the button, but right now they don't do anything. Okay. So now what you want to do is have each of those buttons link to a specific event. So you can select the button and then click on on clicked. So this creates an event wherever, whenever you click this button, it will execute this node. So we're going to do that for all three of them. Unclicked. 
find Clint. Ideally, you'd also want to change the name for the buttons, so let me just name them. Okay, so now you just need to set all of these up. So let's go ahead and create the first one. So whenever we click this one, it should open our base level, which we have already created, which is TTT underscore level. This is what all the previous tutorials we made it up to. So we're going to do open level by name. We named it TTT underscore level. Make sure the name is correct. Okay. And then remove from parent. So this widget removes itself whenever the new level loads. So if we go ahead and play this and then click that, our game starts and everything should be working fine. Should just do the regular thing. Okay. All right. We can control W this. Uh, this is for a future video whenever I do create the tic-tac-toe AI. So I'm going to leave this blank for now. Or I guess I should just leave TTT underscore level for now. So at least it does something. Okay. And for on click quit. This is easy. We could just use an execute console command. And we're just going to type in quit, file save, so quit should work, yep, closes the game. And now let's do the settings menu. So for the settings menu, what we were going to do is we're just going to duplicate this vertical box uh, and make sure we place it in the same position as the other one, which is 1100 by 200. So let me go ahead and plug those numbers in real quick. 100, 200. Okay, for this vertical box, we just need to make sure that the visibility is set to hidden. So that way, like, it's not visible in game as soon as we open the button. Hold on, this will make it easier. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and change all the text for the thing, too. So give me a second. Okay, so I've gone ahead and changed all the names. And also named these. So now we just need to bind it so whenever you click the settings button, it will open up the other box instead. So in order for us to have the settings menu open and close we need to make sure that we have both of our vertical boxes as variables that way you can also access them uh, and our graph our event graph so let's go ahead and make sure that it's working now okay so get that here and then here. Okay, set visibility. We're gonna do control W to that. Um, this one becomes hidden, and this one will become visible. And our menu box, the back button here. So let's get an on click from that and then we just want to flip this there. So what this will do is it will make the main menu visible and remove the settings menu. See if that's working. Uh, yeah. Seems to be working. Okay. Although, I don't know why the first one didn't show up. 
something because I have this set to hidden. Oh, okay. Right. This one. So I accidentally set the first box to hidden at first. It's the vertical box and the main menu box that you need to change the visibilities for. Not the individual objects. Alright, now let's go ahead and make the other two work. So, get the on clicked for resize one. On click and the back button's already working. Oh, uh, yeah, the back button's already working. So, for this, we're just going to use execute console command and we're going to use the console command r.setres, which stands for resolution. Uh, so, that was our first resize, which is what we have mentioned there. And then we got to do a similar one, but this time we're going to do 1920 by 1080. Okay, compile and save this one. Let's run it. Uh, settings. Yep. Yep. So all that is working. Quit. And the last thing that we have left is the credits. So let's go ahead and create those. Just a regular text box right in the middle. Change the color. Make sure I have the outline set to three. Okay. I could probably anchor it. And I guess I also would need a back button here. So let's go ahead and create another back button. Rename this. It's just the same thing as the old one. So. Make sure that is variable is turned on, and then we can have the visibility on this set to hidden. And this visibility also hidden. Oh, then make sure we get up on clicked here. So if we go through this, what will happen? So if you click the back button, then we would want, uh, yeah, we will want the vertical box for the settings to be visible, and then we would want our back button to be hidden along with us. Create it back. So that's going to be hidden, and then as well as our actual credits, which is this one. Okay, so those are going to be invisible, and we just need to go to the settings uh, credit button. Unclick. Let's just duplicate these. And we're just going to flip them. So this becomes hidden, this becomes visible, and this becomes visible. Okay, compile, save, and run. So, let's see, settings, credits. Okay, 
probably going to have to anchor it better. Okay, 1920 by 1080. Does work, does work. Two player game. Yep. And that's about it.